Uh, can you tell the story of working on the movie Bruno? <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? That'll be, this would be a nice wrap up for the podcast. <laughs> so I, I have a, a dear friend who um, is the head of media and entertainment at a consulting firm in Washington. And he does a lot of logistical work. You know, they want to they want to film in a place that looks like 1950s Moscow, let's say, or they want to film in a place that looks like Havana, and you can't film there, so he'll find them a place. So he calls me one day, and he said, "Hey, um, I, I want to introduce you to um, a filmmaker. They're going to need your expertise on the Middle East." I said, "Okay, great." And I had already consulted on a bunch of movies, The Bourne Ultimatum and The Kite Runner, and there, there were a bunch. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I do a conference call. And, and it's Sasha Baron Cohen. And the company was this, this LLC. It was like River, something River LLC. So I Googled it and there's nothing. There's no, like, there's literally nothing. They just made it up for this one film. The production company? Yeah. Yeah. So they're usually shell companies. It's a they, shell company. Yeah. So we got on the phone and Sasha introduces himself and says, I don't know if you know anything about my characters. I said, oh, I know all of your characters. I said, listen, Bruno, I almost pissed myself, but I've been watching you since Ali G when it first appeared on, yep. uh, on HBO. And he says, okay, so you know Bruno. Bruno is a gay Austrian fashion journalist. And I said, yes, very flamboyant. Yes, okay. He said, I want to put Bruno in front of bona fide terrorists. He said, I'm thinking Al-Qaeda maybe Hezbollah. And I want to show them Polaroids of men having hardcore anal sex. <laughs> and I want to ask them in the Bruno character, if this uh, is a form of torture and should these men be sent to Guantanamo? And I said, Oh, that's an exceptionally bad idea. He goes, really? I said, Oh, listen, just as a general rule, you shouldn't mess with the religious types. They're nuts. I said, they'll kill you. They'll kill your crew. They'll go out onto the street and kill people who remind them of you. And he said, but I've got to do it and it's got to be convincing. And I said, well, what we could do is, you know, there are still bona fide terrorists out there who are not religious. They're communists and they're kind of retired. They all live in... Damascus, you know, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Abu Nidal Organization, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. And he said, yeah, do you know how to get in touch with them? I said, I, I think I could probably figure it out. And he said, um, where should we film this thing? And I said, well, do you have, you have any locations in mind? He said, yeah, Jordan. And I said, yeah, Jordan's a good that's a good choice, but you got to bring the Jordanians in on it because they have one of the best intelligence services in the, in the Middle East. You're not going to be able to get away with anything. He said, absolutely not. Nobody can be in on the gag. Nobody. And I said, no, that's, that's not going to work. I said, well, we could do it. I said, you know, I was talking to the Libyan ambassador the other night at dinner and, uh, and they're dying to have Hollywood films done in Libya. This is right before Gaddafi was killed a year before. And he said, no, won't do that. He said, as a Jew, I just can't go to Libya. I'd be too afraid. And I said, well, we could do it in Morocco, but Morocco has very unique architecture and it's not going to, it's not going to look like Palestine. And he said, well, I, I think we should just do it in Jordan, but not tell the Jordanians. And I said, no, I have an idea. I said, Let, let's do it. Let's do it in Syria. I said, I know the Syrian ambassador. And um, I can call the Syrian ambassador and try and get it all, you know, online. And he said, no, no, I'm going to go to Newport Beach tomorrow. And there's a Syrian consulate in Newport Beach. And I said, no, no, this is what you're paying me for. So let me call the Syrian ambassador. The next day, 11 o'clock at night, my wife and I are in bed and we're reading and the phone rings. And I look at the phone and it says, Sasha Baron Cohen. 
And I show my wife, look at this. It's like 1130 at night. So I said, hello, Sasha. And he goes, mate, with his, he has a very thick British accent. He goes, mate, I think I fucked up, mate. And I said, oh, oh, don't tell me you went to that Syrian consulate in Newport Beach. He said he walked into the Syrian consulate. The guy saw him, came out from behind the, the bulletproof glass and said, stop. I know who you are. I know what you do. And you are not welcome in Syria. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. Wow. And I said, OK, I, I got to double down. If we're going to do it in Jordan, you have to tell the Jordanians that you're doing it. And he said, absolutely not. I said, Sasha, if we have bona fide terrorists flying in from Damascus on the same day to go to your hotel room, they're going to be on you like white on rice. And he said, no, I got to risk it. I said, okay. So the plan was he was going to fly out to Amman. And then I was going to fly out the day later. Okay. So only he and one cameraman flew out. And he told me later <laughs> when I arrived that when he landed, they got off the plane and they go through customs and immigration. And there's a guy standing there with a sign that says Sasha Baron Cohen. And he says, I'm Sasha Baron Cohen. And then he tells the cameraman, John got us a limo. John didn't give them any limo. So they get in the car. And he said they're driving through town. And he says to the guy, where are we going? And the driver says, we're going to the royal palace. His majesty is a huge fan. And he says these enormous iron gates open and they go onto the palace grounds. And there's the king. And he's standing next to the director of the Jordanian intelligence service. So they get out of the car and the king says, Sasha Baron Cohen, I am your biggest fan. He said, Bruno, I mean, uh, Borat, I almost wet myself, he says. But I want you to know we're happy to have you in Jordan. Anything you need, you call my friend here. He'll take care of you. Anything you want. And I said the next day when I got there, I said, I told you, you hadn't even arrived in the country yet. And they knew exactly what you were doing and when you were doing it. That's crazy. So we get these guys. And you hadn't told them. No, I didn't say anything to anybody. <clears throat> I, I had a non-disclosure agreement. Right. I, I didn't even tell my wife. Wow. Nothing. So... We, we meet with these two guys, one from the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine General Command and one from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. So we're at this table. They're at this table. I'm, I'm you know, standing against the wall with my notepad like I always do. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm just standing against the wall. So um, we get to the point where he pulls out the Polaroids. And, and dude, these were hardcore gay anal porn. And... He asks them with that very effeminate, flamboyant accent, if, is this torture and should these men be sent to Guantanamo? And the one, like they're adjusting their trifocals. They're old men. They're in their seventies. And he, he looks at the Polaroid like, what? And he goes, no, 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 this not good. This not good. And he puts it down on the table. Sasha had specifically said, I want the guy to leap across the table to try to strangle me. That's how angry I want him to be. And I said, well, I mean, this is pretty offensive for these guys. Yeah. He goes, no, no, this is not good. And he puts it down. And then the other guy picks it up and he looks at it and he's like trying to adjust his glasses like what? And he goes, oh, oh, this haram, not good. And that was it. And we're just like sitting there or they're sitting there. I'm mm -hmm. standing and they're like looking around like, can I get a cup of coffee or how long is this going to take or whatever? And we're like, okay, cut. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And that was it. They didn't even put it in the movie. Wow. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. So the other thing was um, the second part of that Middle East scene. I only consulted on the Middle East part. 
Oh, I should add, I found these guys in the Damascus telephone book. No way. Uh Uh-huh. I figured they're old men. Nobody remembers them. Right. Nobody remembers them shooting up the Rome airport and killing six people or hijacking a TWA plane to Cairo, right? They're just living in these little apartments in Damascus and their names and numbers are in the phone book. So I just called them. Hey, would you do this? You, we're going to pay all your expenses. We'll give you a hundred dollars, you know, be in this documentary about the peace process. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, we go, we go on to Israel. I actually flew home from Jordan. He went to Israel without me. Mm-hmm. And, um, he went to, um, to the Western wall. Right. Mm. But he went in leather boots that went up to his mid thigh and pink hot pants. Need a photo, Steve. <laughs> and a leather vest with no shirt underneath. And he's like covered in hair like a gorilla. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and he said as soon as he got there, he saw this nearby group of yeshiva students with a, rab- a rabbi. And the rabbi spat on him and called him a dirty f- And he said next thing he knew, these yeshiva students are just wailing on him. And they beat the shit out of him to the point where it, it was the only time in the filming of, of the movie that he broke character. And he said, no, no, it's a joke. It's for a movie. I'm Sasha Baron Cohen. It's just a joke. It's a joke. They were wailing on him. They blackened both of his eyes and he had to stop filming for two weeks to get his, uh, we'll see if we can find a picture to get his, uh, you know, eyes swelling to go down. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> look at him riding the okay. cannon oh my god I, I gotta say it was an absolute pleasure to work with him he's a genius and that's not a really word is. that I throw around lightly the man's a genius um, sometimes his genius is too cutting edge for people but I found him to be absolutely brilliant brilliant 